What's up everyone, it's Ryan from Green Tech Network. I decided to go ahead and order an Android TV box. Um, the one that I could find that was the best specs for its price was the B-Link X2, which this is it right here in the box. Um, as you can see, it supports 4K, um, plays H.265 uh, encoded videos, has a quad-core CPU, and has built-in uh, Wi-Fi. I noticed there's like a thousand different companies that sell these. Um, B-Link, I guess, is one of the more well-known ones. Um, a lot of companies sell these same exact ones just under different names. But uh, this is the best one that I could find. Uh, 27 bucks. It was on GearBest.com. You can also get it on Banggood, eBay, um, pretty much anything, any, any website that sells uh, Chinese electronics. Uh, the good thing about this one is it's got the quad-core CPU. Like I said, that was one of the main things I was looking for. And it also has Android 4.4, which uh, obviously, as of the time of recording this video, Android 4.4 is uh, relatively dated. However, most of the apps I plan on running on this um, are compatible with Android 4.4, like Netflix, uh, Plex, all of that. So along with the quad-core CPU, it also has 1 gig of RAM, 8 gigs of onboard memory, which I assume uh, Android takes up a decent portion of that, and also a uh, memory card slot uh, that supports up to apparently 32 gigs for if you want to install more applications. Obviously it has uh, you know USB ports to connect to your um, uh, to your hard drives and flash drives etc. The interesting thing I found was that it does support 4K um, however according to the specs it only supports 4K at 30 frames per second. So if you're really into uh, 60 frame per second movies then you won't be able to uh, watch them in full 4K, there'll probably be some lagging uh, and all that. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the box. Um, I believe that's pretty much all of the specs I've covered so far. So inside the box we got this, which is actually very thin. I wasn't expecting it to be that thin, which is a good thing. Um, there aren't any sticky feet, which is kind of unfortunate. So you can see that it just slides wherever it wants to. I do have some stick on little uh, sticky feet, so I'll probably use those. So in the back, it looks like we have, um, let's see if I can get it to uh, focus on the back. It's kind of hard, it's mirrored. Um, it's got op optical audio out here in the left, so it doesn't want to focus. Um, Ethernet, HDMI out, um, a USB port, the DC power port, which it says right here in the back that, I thought it said in the back, yeah, it says right there. Uh, 5 volts DC at 2 amps. So it um, doesn't really use a whole lot of power. And then on the side we have an additional USB port and that micro SD card that supports up to 32 gigs, supposedly. On the front, I assume that's some sort of uh, light that signifies if it's plugged in or um, turned on. Little power button, nice clicky feel to it. Little X2 logo in the upper left, it's kind of nice. See on the edges, you can see it's a, just kind of like a shiny um, reflective plastic. And then on the top and bottom, it's a, more of a matte plastic. So along with the box itself, you've got your typical um, simplistic uh, instruction guide, if you want to call it that. It's mainly just pictures. Um, some nice cardboard here. Uh, comes with an HDMI cable. Uh, it looks pretty short, if I had to guess. That's probably about, I don't know, let's open it up. It's very short, actually. If I had to guess, it'd probably be two or three feet. Most of these are usually three feet. Let's see. Um, yeah, can't show it on the camera. Obviously, it's too long. But I'd assume probably two and a half feet, it seems like. So maybe, like, maybe one meter is probably what it is. Um, this is the little um, uh, power supply. It's interesting, it doesn't run off of uh, USB because it is 5 volts. Um, I guess they do that because if you have like a 1 amp USB charger, you won't be able to power it fully. So it does have the standard uh, DC um, male port. 
Uh, and this is the US version, so it has the US adapter. You can see on the power supply that it, it is 5 volts, 2 amps output. Input is 100 to 240 volts, uh, 0.5 amps. And then it also comes with a little remote. So let's take the remote out. I don't know if it comes with batteries for the remote. Let's see. Nope, no batteries. So it uses um, two AAA batteries, looks like. Uh, not included, unfortunately. The remote does have a nice look to it. It's kind of like, looks like it's supposed to be a brushed aluminum. It's not actually aluminum. It's a, a plastic. But it has a brushed aluminum look to it. Um, buttons feel pretty decent. It feels um, a little cheap right now, but that's probably because it doesn't have batteries in it, so it doesn't really have any weight to it. Um, but I sure it seems like pretty pretty decent build quality for only uh, 29 bucks. Looks like it has some uh, quick buttons up there to go to your normal things, and uh, a mouse button. That's interesting. Uh, all right, so yeah, that's everything that comes in the box. I'm gonna go ahead and boot it up and show you some of the functionality it provides. So in your first boot, this is the screen that initially pops up. It's just the standard Android launcher. Um, I have the remote here, so you can see that you can kind of go through and um, select which apps you want to open. Um, I did add a few of my own apps. You'll see I added uh, Netflix and uh, Plex over there and uh, Weather Widget up there, which didn't scale too well with the um, screen. So um, I've noticed that the, the remote is nice, but it tends to um, be a lot more user-friendly with a mouse and keyboard. So I do recommend getting one of those um, miniature uh, Bluetooth mouse keyboard combos with a little trackpad. Um, so see some of the apps that are installed here. Let me zoom in. Sorry for the noise in the background if you can hear anything. I have my uh, 3D printer running. Um, so it came with uh, HappyCast over there, uh, SuperSU, um, Kodi, um, and Miracast receiver. Uh, and then all the other standard, you know, like music, Play Store, etc. It didn't, it didn't come with um, that Weather Widget, uh, Antutu, CPU-Z, Epic Citadel, um, uh, Plex, or Netflix. But it came with everything else you see on there. Uh, when I did boot it up for the first time, I had to do a uh, system update. Um, so, actually it was two system, up two system updates, I believe. Uh, but yeah, so one of the, I guess, better things that uh, comes with is Kodi, which is probably what most people will be using. So I'll go ahead and start that up. Um, so this is just the standard uh, screen when you um, boot it up. So you have you know, your music, videos, program, system, etc. So um, I don't have any videos installed on this currently. Um, however, I know that every one of you knows how Kodi works. Um, I haven't had any problems with it running 1080p. I haven't tried 4K yet. Um, I still have to try to find a 4K video to uh, test out on it. Uh, it does come with some some extra add-ons. Um, these are all the ones that it comes with. You can see. Let me zoom in here. Just a few different random ones there. Um, I haven't tried using any of those yet. The one thing I did notice is that the clock is set incorrectly. I think it's set for China, I believe, or somewhere. I don't know where it's set to, but it's not currently uh, 111 a.m., so I need to change that. Um, came with some uh, music add-ons uh, with it. Um, it does have some add-on installers and stuff like that. I haven't had a whole lot of time to mess around with it. I've been kind of busy, so I don't know exactly um, what programs and add-ons it comes with. And then it has all of your standard, you know, Kodi um, settings. So you can go in here, and uh, I do need to change it set to 720p. So I have noticed you can't change the settings within the app for some of the like picture stuff. So you have to go to uh, your home screen, and then go into the actual um, Android settings menu. So I've got, um, so you can see it's connected to uh, oops, right, uh, Wi-Fi there. Uh, Nothing plugged into the Ethernet, oops, Ethernet port. 
Zoom, the zoom's a little finicky today. All right, so I'm gonna go in and see if I can change this to, um, here we go, 1080p, 60 hertz. Uh, okay. Let's see how long it takes. Okie doke. And then let me adjust the uh, screen fill here. Mm, that looks about right. So like I said, on the box, it stated that it doesn't do 4K at 60 frames per second. If you look at the HDMI output mode, you can see it does 4K at um, 30, or 30 frames per second, 30 hertz, whichever you want to call it. So it does not do 4K at uh, 60 hertz, which is, um, I guess, unfortunate for anyone who has uh, 4K 60 frames per second uh, videos. Um, but there's not a whole lot of them out there that I know of right now. There's what, um, The Hobbit, I think is one of the more well-known 60 frames per second ones, 4K. But that's pretty much it when it comes to, um, the first boot up. Uh, obviously, you know, it has all of the standard, um, settings that you would expect on Android. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, so one of the interesting things, which I will be discussing later on, is if you open up CPU-Z, so it says that installed is the all-winner A23, which is kind of interesting because I looked that up and that's only a dual-core processor. Um, but the other thing is is that the uh, all-winner A23 does not have the um, Mali M400 uh, GPU. And it also doesn't have, I don't think, one gig of RAM. I think it's only got half a gig. So that was a weird thing, which I'll touch on later. It actually doesn't have that CPU installed. Um, I don't know why it's coming up like that in CPU-Z. And then it's also showing that... Oh, and no, that's okay. It must be... I, one of the, one of the um, CPU cores earlier was stuck on stops, even if I was trying to... I was running um, Boink as a uh, bench tester to see. There we go. So now, now they all are running. The interesting thing is it does have some heating issues, which I will um, elaborate on further when I do the uh, teardown. I'll show you what I've discovered inside. But um, overall, when you're doing normal consumer grade stuff, you don't have to worry about overheating. But I was running some benchmarks. Um, oh, that's an ad, I guess, for CPU-Z. Uh, um, or I lost my track of thought. Um, I was running some benchmarks on all four cores at once, and there were some heating issues. I was seeing around 95 degrees Celsius, which is a little too warm. Um, even only on two, running on two cores, I was hitting around um, low 80s, mid 80s, I believe, Celsius. Um, so that's one kind of, uh, I guess, uh, downfall. Um, and I'll show you that with the teardown in a sec. Uh, the other interesting thing is that. Um, if you if you have apps that only that uh, only run when the battery is fully charged, you're really gonna have to modify the settings because this thing is reading the uh, the battery as uh, zero percent charged, and that it like does have a battery. So there was one app, uh, Boink, when I was running the benchmarks, that one of the settings is it turns off when it's on um, when it's uh, on battery. So just something to be wary of. But overall the user interface works really well. Um, I got the mouse here. Um, it also has the, or the mouse, excuse me, the remote. It has the mouse button which is kind of interesting and it lets you move a virtual mouse around and uh, click on stuff. It generally, you know, works, tends to work better if you're using like a, um, like an internet browser. Though this is when I was looking up the uh, all winter uh, processor. Yeah, so here's, see so here's the, uh, the where to go. I, wanna, I don't even think I can scroll in here, but I guess you have to take my word for how the A23 says it's only uh, dual core. But I'll uh, I'll elaborate on that. It does not have an A23 installed, so I don't know why it comes up as that. But um, so that's pretty much the overview for the um, boot up and what you can expect. Uh, it does have the full Play Store, but remember this has Android 4.4, uh, so. Um, any apps that uh, are incompatible with 4.4 or earlier, they're not going to be able to be installed on this. Um, it does let you install games as well. Um, 
which obviously is virtually impossible to play on the remote. However, uh, you can play them on, with your mouse and keyboard. So I'm going to show you uh, Epic Citadel, which is a basically a graphics testing or game and it has um, pretty uh, intense graphics for mobile, and it's based off of uh, Unreal Engine. One of, well, I forget which one they're on currently, but um, so let's see. Tap to start. So there is a little bit of stutter. This is being rendered at 1080p, which is pretty impressive. Um, but let's do the little little benchmark here. So we got menu. Let's see. Uh, benchmark. So you can see in the bottom left there the frames per second. It's kind of bouncing. It's between um, anywhere between upper 30s and low 60s. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. But for the most part, it plays pretty smoothly. Um, to put it in perspective, I have a uh, HTC 10, which has the Snapdragon 820, and that'll render at, uh, forget the screen, I think it's like the Ultra HD, like 1440p. That'll render that at around uh, 50 frames per second. So, you know, this is a little on the lower end of processors. Um, so it's nothing crazy. But you can see that it renders pretty well on the um, little processor in this guy. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's no problems running 1080p movies. 720p uh, handles pretty much any uh, uh, video codec you want to throw at it. And um, it does let you, comes with the Miracast receiver. Um, I haven't tested it yet, however, supposedly you can um, use it like, kind of like a Chromecast where you send movies uh, and whatever's on your screen on your Android phone to it. So I'm going to go ahead and now move on to the actual teardown of the device. Alright, so I went ahead and removed the back of the uh, box. Um, to do that, all you have to do is... Uh, get a knife or something with a sharp edge and uh, pry it around in, on these uh, edges around here and the back just pops off. So that's, back's just a piece of plastic. Um, here, this is the bottom of the circuit board. So this is the, the top of the device. Um, and this is the bottom of the circuit board and it pretty much just uh, falls right out. So like I said, it was having heating problems. This is the heat sink. Um, it's just a solid hunk of metal that's actually pretty thick uh, and it just kind of pops on to the top and then it has a little uh, thermal pad to transfer the heat from the CPU which is uh, right right here in the center. Um, the funny thing is it has that little little sheep on the circuit board I have no idea why um, I thought that was kind of funny. So like I said that is the all winner H3. Um, I, I don't know why it was saying it was the the A23 or H23 or whatever the heck it said it was on CPU-Z. Um, this is the actual. It is a quad-core processor. Um, you can you can look up the specs and everything. It's mainly designed for uh, cheap uh, things like you know little Android TV boxes like this. Um, this is the. 8 gigabyte of ROM. That's the uh, little uh, circuit there. This is the power button. Um, and then this is the Wi Fi and might be the Bluetooth. I know it's definitely the Wi Fi. It's got this little antenna. It sticks up. It's kind of a funny little springy one. Um, and it's got that goofy <laughs> sheet printed on it. I don't know why. I noticed on the back, which is kind of interesting, there's a res reset switch, which you don't have. Actually, wait, you do have access. Yeah, it's this little, um, it's that little hole. I didn't, I didn't know what that was exactly, but it actually is a reset button. So if you have, like, a little, uh, uh, I guess, mechanical pencil, you can poke it with the lead. Um, so then you see, you know, this is where all your, uh, ports are, the DC port. Good thing, or important thing to notice is it's 5 volts DC. A lot of these use 12. Uh, this one uses 5. Um, I believe this is the Bluetooth antenna. But, um... Overall, the board is uh, pretty pretty well put together. Um, you can see all of the soldering is uh, pretty high quality in my opinion. Um, that's the version of the board, I guess. 
and um, once again there's the CPU. So I guess the only the only thing I don't like about this is how much it heats up. Um, and I guess you can you kind of have to expect that for something such a case that's so slim. So I was thinking of maybe down the road um, making an aftermarket case of some sort and um, or you know like cutting out a little hole here and then placing a heat sink on top of this metal pad so the heat would transfer a little bit better. Because one thing I did notice, it was weird, the, the bottom of it actually was getting hotter than the top. Um, and I wasn't, I, I, when, I, when that happened, I assumed the heat sink was on the bottom, but it turns out the heat sink's on the top and the bottom actually gets a lot of heat. Um, that might be because it was resting on the floor, which is a, you know, a decent insulator for heat. Um, so it could do with some uh, rubber standoff feet, like I said. But um, overall, uh, it's pretty pretty great bargain for the price. Um, you get a decent quad core processor with one gig of RAM. Um, it is all winner, which, as anyone who's familiar with the processor world knows, that all winner isn't the best um, CPU manufacturer or system on a chip manufacturer. Uh, however, for the price point, you can't really complain. Um, so let me get that back in there. There we go. Um, there were, um, forgot to mention that, there were four screws here. One, two, three, four that I uh, took out before that. But yeah, like I said, overall, uh, really nice product for such a low price. Uh, the only main downfall is that it uh, does have some heating issues, which could be countered with a um, custom case or um, cutting out a little uh, hole there with some heat sinks. And uh, for some people, like I said, the, uh, the 4K uh, 60 hertz might be a deal breaker. For me, it's not the end of the world. Um, I feel like the most important thing for me was 1080p, 60 frames per second, and then also Wi-Fi, since I don't feel like having it uh, tethered in with the uh, Ethernet. But um, definitely recommend it. So feel free to check it out. Uh, like I said, it's a little under 30 bucks, depending on which retailer you buy it from. Uh, but yeah, that concludes this review for the uh, B-Link X2 Android TV box. Thank you for watching.